Okay, so what I'm here to talk about today uh, is I'd like to give you a guide to NoSQL. So I'm sure you've been hearing all about SQL and NoSQL all week, and you probably are wondering, well, what is NoSQL? Well, NoSQL is a non-relational data store that does not need a fixed schema, and that usually uh, avoids join operations. At least this is what Wikipedia uh, has uh, said it is so far. SQL, obviously, is the language we've all been using, relational, algebra, all that, you know, all that fun stuff. So what does all this actually mean in the end? So what we get into next is the slide didn't update. No, not on screen. Oh, well. OK, now we're at things. OK, so uh, what do we really get into? In our world, for instance, we have select group by. Now, what does this mean? We take some data, and we take all this data, and we come up with some aggregate value based on this data. So we look at sums. We look at averages. And in the world of the NoSQL world, which the slide jumped on me again. So we'll assume we're on the next slide. Uh, at this point, what is the MapReduce world? No, no. OK, now I can see through the backside. This is much better on YouTube, by the way. <laughs> OK, so MapReduce. Uh, in the NoSQL world, what they have is MapReduce. And what MapReduce is, is you take some values, and you take some data, and you take a bunch of machines, and you throw it at a bunch of machines. So instead of having a single machine with, say, indexes or anything, what you do is you buy a bunch of computers, push everything out. Now, that's what, it is, that's what a MapReduce is. So basically, take some data, push it out to a bunch of machines, have them calculate it, summation it, hand it back to you. Um, in our world, of course, we have join operations. What are join operations? Join operations, we take a set of data, we find a table. Now, what do they have in the NoSQL world? We have multiple MapReduce, because in their world, they don't have joins. So what do they do? They take a lot of data, they throw it out to machines, use MapReduce across a lot of machines, multiple MapReduce. Yes, this is going poorly. Yeah. Anyway, table scans. So in the SQL world, what do we have? We have something called table scans. You know, we look at a bunch of data, we want to scan an entire table, we want to find out what that data set is. So in our world, in the SQL world, we have something called a table scan. Uh, in the NoSQL world, what do they have? They have multiple map machine MapReduce. So instead of scanning a single machine, what they do is they take lots of computers and they scan all the data across those computers and feed that all back to a single machine. So what they have is multiple machine MapReduce uh, inside of the NoSQL world, world, world. What do we have in the SQL world? We have order by limit. We take some data, we sort that data, we provide a limit, we say we like 1 through 10, 50 through 100 in all of these, you know, some type of piece. In the NoSQL world, world, on the other hand, they have natural data order. Well, what does that mean? That means they write all the data out the disk and then they take it all back in natural data order because, well, of course, you would actually never want the data in any other order than the day that you, way that you actually wrote it, right? So that's what they have. They have natural data order. Um, and, and on top of that, if they need to change something, they have, well, MapReduce. They can go in and take a lot of machines, modify the data, and make it work like that. Poorly. <laughs> poorly, very poorly. What about features? Uh, what kind of features do we actually see in the NoSQL world? I mean, what are they, what are they bringing to the table that we haven't seen so far um, out there? Well, in the NoSQL world, um, what they have is generally forward-rolling logs. Um, what they do is they design a lot of their systems such that they, they have a disk, uh, and they start writing data, and they have a file, and they keep writing data, and then they keep writing data, and then, well, they keep writing data, and they keep writing data because, well, you know, they'd never run out of a single disk. Um, that sort of technology has never actually failed anymore. You know, no one's ever needed to create, say, a vacuum system at all uh, to actually take care of a problem where maybe you might fill up the disk. Because, of course, the data, you know, is never going to overfill an entire disk. That just never happened. So in the SQL world, they think a lot about forward rolling logs. Uh, non-transactional. All of these systems, the non-SQL systems, are, are the new SQL systems, are all non-transactional. And we know that because, well, they just don't believe transaction needs to exist. I mean, why would you actually ever need uh, a transaction? I mean, there's never been a point in time in our world, in the open source world, where anyone's ever actually made fun of a database for not having transactions for any period of time. I mean, that would just be unheard of. Who'd actually think about that? So, you know, non, you know no SQL, fine, non-transactions, never been a problem at all in the history of open source databases. It's always been just fine. They're also schema free. Um, they don't, you don't need to design schema. What you do is you have some data, you push it into the, the NoSQL solution, and you push some more data in, you push some more data in, and there's no need to actually be confined to things like schemas or tables or any kind of relational uh, operation whatsoever. <laughs> it's just not needed because you've got all these machines that you can just say, please find my data. And you just buy, if you, you know, need uh, to find data faster, you just buy more machines. Because really, you know, I know where everything is. Please do not touch. 
And in the end, you know, really the problem gets back to is that SQL kind of sucks. Who wants to learn what is, you know, not that awesome of a language? It's, it's really not that functional. It's not Python. It's not C++. It's not, you know, Ruby. It's not a very good language at all. This was a, an excellent slide we found. The first slide says, hey, so how do I query the database? The next guy says, well, it's not a database. It's a key value store. Next guy says, hey, it's uh, okay, it's not a database. Uh, how do I query it again? And he goes, well, you need to write a, a you know, MapReduce Erlang function uh, in order to get your data. And then the guy says, uh, did you just tell me to go fuck myself? And the next guy says, well, I believe I did, Bob. Because, you know, this whole ad, ad hoc query thing, who really needs this stuff at all? It's just, it's just unneeded. Why do we need SQL? Everybody can write Erlang MapReduce functions daily at their jobs on demand. Who else would need anything else? And really, at the very end of all of this, you know, Really, a lot of this is about what are we actually doing to our planet? You know, SQL, you know, it's not doing much to actually help with global warming at all. You know, with MapReduce systems, we need to buy more and more computers. And you know, 6% of the power on the planet currently today goes to data centers, you know? And obviously, with our, our global warming needs, we need to buy a lot more computers. Anyway, thank you very much.